What's up guys, Asian here again with another theory crafting video and today we're going to be going over resistances. Um, so what kind of inspired me to make this video is that um, I've been helping out a couple of beginner tanks in one of my guilds and they've been having a hard time finding information about resistances, how to get it, how much uh, mitigation, how much resistances that they need, how much mitigation is counted for resistances uh, because it's not very uh, clear cut as to uh, what it what it means. So I decided to make this video to kind of help out pretty much everybody in terms of figuring out where do you get resistances, what is your cap, how much resistances is equal to what percentage of mitigation, things like that. Um, so hopefully this will help clear up any questions uh, that people might have with resistances. So the first thing that we need to know is where can we get resistances from? So we'll start off with armor. Now all armor has an armor rating. In this case, in our far heavy chest, we have 2772 armor rating. That is put into both your spell and physical resistance um, at a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, ignoring passives, of course. So uh, 2772 will be the increase to both spell and physical resistances. Now, coming from other MMOs, that might seem a little bit uh, weird that heavy armor boosts your spell resistance by the same amount as it boosts your physical resistances, but that's how ESO uh, works. Um, however, just like all other MMOs, heavy armor gives you the most resistances, followed by medium and then light. Um, there are pretty much no exceptions to this at all. Um, in terms of armor rating specifically. Now each armor piece has its own armor rating and each piece gives it a different amount of armor rating based on the piece itself. So the most armor rating is going to come from your chest. Your chest will always have the most amount of armor rating. The least will always be your waist. Uh, coming up after waist is going to be your gauntlets. After gauntlets you have your shield. And then these last four all have the exact same armor rating. Uh, so your legs, your feet, your helm, I'm going to show you a heavy helm because I have medium and light a heavy helm, and heavy shoulders. So these all have the exact same armor rating. Anybody who's telling you that legs have more than feet is lying to you. You can see here, proof is in the pudding, it's 2425, 2425, exact same armor rating. So for that reason, um, if you are a tank and you decide to do a 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light uh, setup and you are using a crafted set like Torx Pact or Histpark, uh, one way to maximize your resistances is to use a heavy helm and a heavy sh shoulder for your monster pieces and then craft a light waist and a medium hands piece. Uh, that gives you the most amount of resistances because of the way that each armor piece armor rating works out. So you lose the least amount of resistance from having a light waist and a medium hands and you gain more from a heavy shoulder and a heavy head. So that's kind of how you can get resistances from armor rating. So there are two other traits that you want to consider uh, on your uh, pieces when it comes to increasing your armor rating. So you, those two are reinforced and nern honed. So I have a reinforced shield here you see it increases armor value by a percentage amount. It's 16% at gold, and I believe it increases by 1% for each quality, so purple will be 15, blue will be 14, and so on and so forth. Uh, so obviously, because it is a percentage increase, it'll only be better than Nern Honed uh, on certain pieces. Nern Honed, let me swap to a Nern Honed shield, increases your armor rating by a fixed amount. At gold, it is 301, and uh, it goes down from there. As you can see here, the Nern Hone shield gives me just slightly more armor than my reinforced shield. So that's kind of the the flipping point. Uh, if you want to use Nern Hone to increase your armor value, you're going to want that on your waist and your hands and your, sh and your shield because it is a flat increase versus the percentage increase from reinforced. Uh, the rest of your armor pieces, so your chest, your legs, your helm, your shoulders and your feet. If you do want to use one of those two traits, go with reinforced because you'll get more out of reinforced and nern honed when it comes to those larger pieces itself. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of how armor relates to your resistances. Um, there are another, there are no weapon enchants and there are no armor enchants that directly increase your resistances. Um, however, there are jewelry enchants that do increase your resistances. So let's just head over to a enchanting table. So you can see here, if you have a subtractive rune, and then you use physical harm or sp or magical harm, so tottery or mockery, and then you use whatever aspect you want, uh, you get a resistance glyph. Uh, so it's maxed out at 927 for a 
legendary, truly superb glyph, and it just goes down from there. Uh, so you can get either physical or spell. There is no glyph that increases both. Um, so that's kind of one other place that you can try to get extra resistances from. Uh, so that's from your jewelry enchants themselves. Uh, so now there are other ways to get your resistances. Uh, obviously you have your resistant buffs. So there are two buffs, one for spell and one for physical resistances. So major resolve is your physical resistance and major ward is your spell resistance. So your major buffs will increase by 5280, you can see there from hardened armor. And then you have minor resolve and minor ward. That usually comes from combat prayer from your healer, although some classes do have uh, innate sources of minor resolve and minor ward. So that increases your resistances by 1320. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, those are the only buffs that you can get in terms of increasing your resistances. Now there are also passives that you can have um, that increase your resistances. So for example, in the Dragon Knight, and the Draconic Power Skilled Armor will increase your spell resistance by a 33 100. Uh, now, not all classes are going to have a flat increase like Dragon Knights do. Uh, so, for example, um, Wardens under the class line of Winter's Embrace, they have a passive that increases their resistances by 500 for every Winter's Embrace ability that they have slotted on their bar. So, if you have no Winter's Embrace ability slotted, you don't get any boost from your passives. So, make sure to read your passives carefully to see if you do need to. Uh, wear certain pieces of armor or use certain abilities in order to get your buffs. A uh, classic example is Nightblades. Nightblades under the Shadow class line have a passive that gives you major resolve and major ward, but you need to cast a Shadow ability in order to gain that those buffs. So as a, if you do decide to play a Sap Tank, for example, you're going to need to use a Shadow ability in order to gain your major resistance buffs. Uh, so the other passive that everybody has access to is going to be your heavy armor passives. Resolve increases physical and spell resist by 3, 362 for every piece of heavy armor you have equipped. Light armor also has a equivalent or quasi-equivalent passive spell warding. It just only boosts your spell resistance, however. So that's kind of why Magicka DPS have slightly better survivability, not just because of shields, but also because they have a passive that boosts their spell resistance. Medium armor, unfortunately, does not have anything that boosts resistances. They're pretty much all DPS-based passives. And of course, you also have racial abilities. Bretons, for example, have a passive that increases their spell resistance. Dunmer have a passive that increases their flame resistance um, by a certain amount, uh, 2079. Uh, so that's kind of where uh, the final source of resistances can come from, racial passives. As far as I know, it's just um, Dark Elves with the flame resistance. Uh, Dun uh, not Dunmer, uh, Bosmer, Wood Elves with the, I believe, disease or poison resistance and then you have Bretons with their additional spell resistance. There is no class racial passive that boosts physical resistance. Alright, so now that we've talked about where you can get the resistances, what does this all mean? You can see here we have numbers for when it comes to resistances, but we don't really get a sense of how much do those numbers actually count for. Uh, so we know that the hard cap for resistances is 33,000. So when I say hard cap, that doesn't mean that once you hit 33,000, you can't increase your resistances anymore. What it means is you can continue to increase your resistances past 33,000, but you're not going to get any additional mitigation out of any value beyond 33,000. So that's what we mean by hard cap. Um, this pretty much basically says once you hit 32,000, you're going to mitigate the mitigation is 50%, so you're going to mitigate 50% of your incoming damage once you hit 33,000. Anything above that will not mitigate any additional damage. So now that we know what the hard cap is and we know what the percentage mitigation is, we can do some very basic math and figure out how many uh, resistance, resistance points is equal to 1% additional mitigation. So it's basically 33,000 divided by 50 and you get 660. So every 660 additional resistances that you get, you increase the amount of damage that you can mitigate by 1%. So if we take, for example, what are my resistances I have here, I have a spell resistance of 24,826. It's 24,826 divided by 660, and that gives me 37.6 uh, uh, mitigation for spell damage. Uh, for physical damage, I have a 21,163. Divide that by 660, and I get 32% uh, percent physical mitigation. So obviously spell resistance will reduce the amount of damage you take from magical attacks, physical from physical attacks. 
Uh, so flame, shock, frost damage counts as spell magical attacks. Uh, disease and poison count as physical attacks. Just so you guys are aware, where if you guys are PvPing or something like that, that's kind of where those enchants and the specific elemental damage fall in terms of spell or physical damage. Uh, so that's pretty much all there is when it comes to resistances. Now how do you get to resistance cap? It's actually not that difficult to do. Um, so you can see here, this is what I am sitting at right now. I don't have Legendary Lord Wardens. Um, I will actually go ahead and gold those out right now actually so you guys can see. Um, but I am running a 5-1-1 setup on my tank. So I do not get uh, extra, I think it's 720-ish extra resistances from the heavy armor line from Resolve. Um, so you don't really need that. Oh yeah, so one thing t I do want to note is that resistant mitigation, as far as we can tell, does round to the, uh, well I guess it floors it to the nearest whole tenth of a percentage point. Uh, so basically if you have, for example, 14.26, um, it'll round down to 14.2. Uh, if you have 14.22, then it'll round down to 14.2. Alright, so I just golded out my Lord of Wardens here. Alright, so this is what we're looking at in terms of resistances. So, this is my t pretty typical setup here. Uh, Alkosh, Ebon, with Lord of Wardens, or I can use uh, Bloodspawn. And so, let's go ahead and put on our major buffs. So, I can see with our major buffs here, we're already hit 30,000. That's the recommended amount for a spell. We're at 26,377 for physical, uh, we're on our infused, not our reinforced, just so you guys can see what I mean. Now when Lord of Warden procs, I get an additional 3870, uh, so that obviously will push me above the 30,000 I need for physical resistance, and it'll push me over the 33k cap for spell resistance. Now if I also have, for example, my minor boosts, that'll put me up to... Uh, 27,600, so, and then 31,300, so it's actually very easy to get up the physical resistance cap as long as you have Lord Wardens or Bloodspawn. Now, Bloodspawn doesn't have any additional, let me just equip Bloodspawn real quick. So Bloodspawn, as you can see, you have lower base resistances, um, so you can see uh, you lose out on 3,000 because Lord Warden does have that spell of physical resistance as their one piece. Um, but Bloodspawn, when it procs, procs for just slightly less than what Lord Warden does additively, so you still get a uh, pretty close resistance cap here. So you can see 6450 added onto the third uh, 2340. Uh, so that rigs me up to 29, uh, 29800. So that's pretty close to the 30k recommendation for resistances. If once I get my minor resolve, minor ward, that b puts me at 30k. Uh, so that's kind of how you can get your resistances. Now, obviously, if you're a Dragon Knight, you're definitely going to be able to hit Spell Resistance Cap very easily just because of Scaled Armor. Physical Resistance Cap is going to be a little bit more difficult to make, but it is uh, possible to get up to Physical Resistance Cap. Um, although 30k is plenty for most content. You don't really need to hit the hard cap in order to be an effective tank, uh, obviously, uh, because I have cleared pretty much all the Craglorn uh, hard modes except for HRC as a tank and this is kind of the setup I'm using so even with just a uh, base of 23.4k it's still enough to take most vet content uh, as long as you have good healer and you are aware of your fight mechanics uh, so that's it for this video please let me know down in the comments if you have any additional questions about resistances how to get it uh, what um, how to maximize it, things like that. I'm always happy to help people out when it comes to um, you know, theory crafting and your builds and things like that. So I hope you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.